assalamu alaikum viewers please like share and subscribe this channel links of pdf files used in this video are given in description so today's lecture is about bonding situation in metal carbonyls and in this lecture we will mainly see how carbonyl and metal bonding takes place and what is the nature of this type of bonding so metal carbonyls just like other coordination complexes are coordination complexes in which metal act as center metal atom or ion whereas carbonyls act as ligands so if we see here a typical coordination complex uh, so it consists of two components the cationic component is simple ion whereas the inionic component is coordination complex now as potassium has plus 4 charge so the coordination sphere will have minus 4 charge as one cyanide has minus one charge so six cyanides will have minus six charge so in order to balance the negative four iron must have plus two oxidation state so this is a typical example of coordination complex so if we see here the bonding between metal and the ligand takes place and the factor which is controlling this bonding is the charge on this metal so if metal has a greater charge similarly a ligand has a greater charge then there will be a stability of this coordination complex however if we see here these are the example of the coordination complexes in which the metal uh, is there whereas the ligand is carbonyl so if we see here there is no charge on this sphere so it means no cationic and anionic species can attach to this sphere so overall charge is zero as carbonyl is a neutral ligand so it has zero charge so then iron will have a zero charge in this complex similarly a chromium will have a zero charge in this complex and nickel will have a zero charge on this complex so it is very surprising that there is no charge between metal and ligand and still the metal carbonyl complexes are very stable so why this is happening this is due to the special type of metal carbonyl bonding and this will we will further discuss in the lecture as we proceed so in order to elaborate further let's see how this coordination complex is constituted so if we say here, see here there is no charge on the coordination complex so the overall charge is zero carbonyl has a zero charge and then iron will have a zero charge so this is the charge separation step so as iron is a central metal atom so this is the valence shell electronic configuration of iron so in vbt form we will write this configuration like this as carbonyl is a strong field ligand as we have discussed from the this concept uh, in crystal field theory so all these electrons will be pair up so the iron rearranged its electronic configuration like this due to the strong field effect uh, in which all these electrons are pair up in the inner orbitals so as there are five carbonyls attached so we need five empty orbitals so 1d 1s and 3p orbitals will hybridize to form 5d sp3 orbitals all these orbitals are empty so carbonyl will donate its electron pair uh, to these uh, empty orbitals and this will be the final geometry which is trigonal bipyramidal of iron pentacarbonyl so this is the overall um, uh, constitution of this complex now we will see here in deeply that what orbital of carbonyl is actually overlapping with empty dsp3 hybrid orbital of iron now if we see here what is the bonding situation in carbonyl so uh, this is the geometry in which carbon and oxygen has three triple bonds among them one lone pair is present on carbonyl uh, carbon and the other lone pair is present on carbonyl oxygen so uh, as uh, it has two atoms so we will consider according to hybridization one central atom and i am considering in this example carbon as central atom so the hybridization will takes place on carbon you can assume the hybridization on oxygen but i am comfortable right now with carbon so i am placing carbon 
as central atom for hybridization before further going into the lecture i am once again repeating what we are doing the case is that in normal coordination complexes iron or the central atom mostly has positive charge whereas the ligand has negative charge so both attract each other this cause stability among the complexes but what is happening in metal carbonyls as metals don't have any positive charge similarly the ligand carbonyl don't have any negative charge these all are neutral species but still these complexes are stable so in order to discuss or in order to elaborate this effect we are you know, doing all this practice and now we have reached uh, to a situation where we must have to understand the bonding situation in carbonyl or carbon monoxide ligand in itself so this is the complete electronic configuration of carbon whereas this is the valence electronic configuration of carbon and now this configuration has been written just like this in in the form of valence bond theory so as we have one lone pair and there is only one sigma bond so both these species have to be adjusted in hybridization as other two are pi bonds so pi bonds are not involved in hybridization so we will not take care these bonds in the hybridization so we will only adjust uh, one lone pair and one sigma bond so that is why this is the valence shell electron configuration one lone pair is present one electron for sigma is already present so we will not do any excitation and we will keep on going uh, this situation as it is in hybridization so one s and one p orbital both will combine to form two sp hybrid orbitals just like this one has one lone pair whereas other has one single electron this py and this pz these are as it is coming and they are not involved in hybridization so they will lose their identity whereas this s and p now these have been involved in hybridization so they has lose their identity and now they are considered as sp orbitals as we have taken carbon as central atom so hybridization will takes place only in the central atom which is carbon whereas now we will see what is happening in oxygen so just like carbon we will write the complete electronic configuration of oxygen whereas this is the valence configuration of oxygen and this is the configuration of oxygen written in the form of vbt so when the sp orbitals are formed now these also arrange in linear form so just like see here this is the carbon and two sp orbitals one this and one this both have been arranged here one contains a pair of electrons whereas the other contains this single electron which is coming from the carbon so this red electron it is represented by this orbital now <clears throat> what is happening that first of all we will see here this is the oxygen atom so the py orbital of oxygen will overlap uh, uh, with the uh, sorry the px orbital of the oxygen will overlap with the sp orbital of carbon so in this way overlapping takes place and here a first bond has been formed and we can see here that this is the first bond which is formed between the carbon and oxygen this uh, uh, sp orbital already contains a pair so this electron pair has been placed here so now this overlapping has been takes place and this sigma bond has been formed now what we are doing here what are the different um, components of this overall diagram so here we have discussed the geometry here is the bonding situation of carbon and here is the other oxygen atom this is the overall orbital diagram and this is the geometry and shape which is constituted in in a result of this bonding so if we see here this sp orbital which is here as it contain already a lone pair so there will be no overlap from the oxygen so this is the lone pair so this is the sp uh, uh, orbital which contains single electron this has been represented here and the px which is lying here of oxygen overlap uh, with the uh, sp of carbon 
so in this way this bond have been constituted and a first sigma bond has been formed between carbon and oxygen now after one lone pair and one this sigma bond has been justified now this is the unhybridized py which is containing the single electron on carbon this has been shown here this will overlap with the py of oxygen and in this way a second bond has been constituted which is definitely if a second bond is formed between um, two elements then it will be a pi bond so this overlapping has been shown here by this dark line after then now what is happening in oxygen this 2s is not overlapping with anyone and it has been the lone pair on oxygen we have consumed this px we have consumed this py uh, now this pz remains as it is and what is that the pz of carbon is empty whereas the pz of oxygen is having a, a whole electron pair so a third bond which will be again a pi bond will be formed between the pz of oxygen and pz empty of carbon so this third bond will be formed but it will be a pi coordinate covalent bond so here we see this is the pi coordinate covalent bond and here in the light uh, line we have represented that this is the pz which is empty of carbon and this is the pz which contains the whole electron pair which is present on oxygen so these overlap to form a third pi bond but it is a coordinate covalent bond as the electron pair which is shared between carbon and oxygen in this bond is only shared or contributed by the oxygen so in this way the linear geometry or shape of this carbonyl bond has been constituted now question is there that if we see here in the bonding diagram that we are placing carbon towards iron like uh, both carbon and oxygen contains lone pair but it is the carbon side that is attaching towards the center metal atom or ion as this is the ambidentate ligand so both carbon and oxygen can be attached but in all cases carbon side has been attached so what is the justification of this reason is as these two electrons are shared mutually here there is a coordinate covalent bond and the pair is contributed only by the oxygen so as a result of which although oxygen is electronegative element but as it donates its electron pairs towards the carbon so carbon will get partial negative charge whereas oxygen will get partial positive charge so as a result of which this side will be attached to metal because metal is always positive or tend to remain positive so this partial negative side will be attached towards the metal so this is the overall bonding situation of carbonyl so in this way we have deeply studied that uh, how the metal carbonyls uh, are composed of and what is the bonding situation so now we have understood that as this lone pair is placed in sp hybrid orbital of carbon so in this diagram all these lone pairs are contained in sp hybrid orbital which is filled and this filled sp orbital will overlap with empty hybrid orbital of metal to form a sigma coordinate covalent bond which is represented here between metal and ligand so we have completed a one task so far and that is that we have understood the basic bonding situation in carbonyl so in the next lecture we will see and answer that why both metal and ligand are neutral and still this bond is very much stable we will discuss this in the next lecture i hope you have understood uh, this lecture if you have any question let me know i will answer as soon as possible if you make your question in the comment section okay thank you allah hafiz